G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now look at the Schnell boat. It is finally finished after all this time. Yes, it was pretty close in the last video, but in this video I will show how I added the anchor rope and the antenna wire and there's also little ropes here that go in between all of the railings. There's lots of little things. There's also a very subtle weathering you can't quite see it in the wide shot with all lights on, but I have added a wash over the camo and through the sides of the hull, and that's just smoothed things out a bit, and it's given it a little bit of a water appearance. There's a little bit of chipping along a wall line. That's it. Only subtle, because I know a lot of you said, don't weather it, don't ruin it. Well, no, I don't think I have. I've kept the look. She's clean, as they were. They were very well looked after. The only place I have done some chipping is on the guns because they do get knocked around and sort of pushed around a little bit. So they've got a little bit of chipping on them and I've done some dry brushing, done all of that. I've even added a special flag. Yeah, so there it is. Okay, well, would you like to see how I did the final additions and revisions and changes? I'm sure you would, that's why you're here. Okay then, let's roll the music. <laughs> So before we begin the recent changes, what I thought it might be good is to go back and just recap on all the things that I've done to the Schnell boat to get it to this point, because it's a little different to the stock standard Revell kit. So for those of you that this is the first time you've even seen this kit, that'll be interesting. And maybe for everyone else, just be nice to have a little bit of a recap. All right, here we go. The kit was a joy to put together. For a Revel kit, there was very little cleanup. Everything fitted really well, and I was quite surprised. It was really enjoyable. Bridge went together quite fast, and I had the basic components there. Didn't glue everything together. A lot of stuff was dry fit. Did glue the hull, of course. That um, that went together very nicely. The um, screws and the rudders, I fit them, but then I took them off and painted everything, put them back on later. The little component pieces here to put the torpedo tubes through. Love little parts. Detail everywhere. Now, this is the kit part for the torpedo tube hatch. And I didn't like that closed. I decided I'd open it. So I drilled out the hole, bored it out to the correct size, and then I added a little shim inside there, and plus added a face on the uh, open door. And there you go. That was so much better, I thought. It really looked apart. Now, I added also some grills onto the vents there over the bridge. They improved that. Everything fitted well. It all looked really good. But what I wanted to improve were the guns. So here's the forward gun, the 20 millimeter sits at the bow. Now I've got an aftermarket kit and that replaced the barrel with a metal one and a little um, resin breech there. So that was quite good and didn't take much to do. The twin 20 millimeter, it was a bit more work. The, uh, I had to build up the whole shield. There was a bit of mucking around to do with that. I used a lot of the base with it, but that came together rather nicely. I was very happy with the result there. Quite an improvement. So there you go. That's how the uh, forward gun looks when it's in the bow. Now, the main gun, which sits at the rear, it uh, it's a lot of work. I ended up using the styrene base because the folding photo etch base was just too complicated for me, and I really felt it didn't need it. The styrene base was fine. As you can see, there's all three of them all done up and I'm really happy with the result, especially that main gun, just using the parts that of the photo etch that improved it. So there's the forward gun and then that's the uh, twin sits there midships. They all come up really well. A bit fiddly, sure, but well worth it in the end. I added some brass pedestals to the base of the hull. And to do that, I had to cut a little bit of the keel out, but those brass pedestals screwed in nicely, and I think they really improved the, um, the look and the stance of this kit. Now, the bridge had a photo etch upgrade, and it was a bit fiddly, I must say. I didn't use all the parts, but I got the main ones on, and I was pretty happy with you know the effort that I made to drill out at least those windows so they were open, which I thought looked a hell of a lot better and put in the extra bits. Now, all of that's done, it was time for painting. So I uh, yeah, basically got the bottom of the hull, that really dark gray. The deck, I wanted that sort of foam green. And I want to put the candy stripes on the little bow piece. And that was a bit fiddly. I had to work out a way how to mask it up and then very carefully 
airbrush them on but I managed to get it with no bleed and I was really thrilled with that result. Next was the wood effects. I did a whole video on that showing how that I did the wood effects all the way through. There's not a lot of wood on this kit but where there is it sort of sticks out. So my color palette here was you know quite garish really but it actually all tones together nicely at least I think so. Torpedoes yep copper ends silver stems oh you know lots of different colors in this build but somehow they do all come together. Now, here I'm starting to do some of the uh, experiments for the camo. Now, this actually is a real camo scheme. This is from Finland. This was the Finnish camo scheme that they used. So I didn't make it up. It is real. And I did a whole video on how I hand painted that. And that was the result. I was so pleased with that. It could have looked horrible, but I think I managed to, you know, just get it to work. I started to use the kit's supplied railings, but they're just too fat and chunky. So I ended up making my own using brass wire and some stock sort of tube and drilling it out. That's a lot of work, it was kind of fiddly. And then my friend Craig made some 3D printed stanchions. They were so much easier to use. And in the end, that is what I used to finish off all the railings on this build. Okay then, let's get on with doing some work on this. Now the first thing will be a little bit of weathering. And then I'll describe everything else, bringing it up to the point where she is today. I used some life color liquid pigments, and this one's called a surface shadower. And it's part of their ship range for basically adding detail to ships. Now, this just went straight over the top of uh, my other life color paint, and that's the Stono Res base. And then you kind of wipe it and smudge it around and try and get some smears that look like sort of the kind of thing you get on the side of a hull. And then use the remover with another cotton bud and you take away as much as possible. Same principle that you do with oils and then remove things using thinners. Exactly the same except this is all water based and they're uh, life color liquid pigment acrylics. Very easy to do. And the effect, well, it's subtle. You know, you can sort of highlight details there, like I've got some drip points, but it's subtle, but you can see it does kind of just add a very faint patina, and I think that works. Next, I needed to do some detail work on the guns, and the barrels needed to be a darker colour. I didn't use black, I used a very, very, very dark grey, and a very, very dry brush. There's not much paint on this brush, and I kind of just, you know waved it on so I didn't lose any of the lovely detail or the you know the thinness of that brass barrel. Now I also decided I need to do a little bit of chipping. These are guns of course so a little bit of chipping on the edges, a little bit of you know not much it's 170 second scale remember so you'll be very careful you can end up with horrible foot size chips. A little bit of that and then some dry brushing across the details and that brought up all those little bits on the guns. Now it was time to do a bit of rigging. It's indicated in the kit what to do. On the stern here, instead of having railings, there's actually you know rope that goes between all those metal stanchions and metal bars. And they go across a little rear piece. It almost looks like a tiller, but it's not. And that's uh, that has a life, a life buoy on it. Here I used the kit supplied cordage and I just rolled it through a, uh, a wax block as you saw to get rid of any furries. A bit of white glue. Hold the knots in place, that's all it needed. I don't sort of use super glue in a situation like this. Really, the white glue will be fine and it'll all disappear. That's the beauty of the white glue. It's mainly water. Most of that evaporates and what's left is pretty well clear. So just some simple knots, nothing real complicated. You don't make it super tight because these will have a little bit of sag in them. So they were sort of very careful to make sure that I didn't pull it up really tight, you know. There's no need for that. Easy to trim away, not a problem. And uh, now we just run the top one along there. Same sort of thing, big fat hand in the, hand in the way there, Harry. Yes, it's, it's, it's riveting bloody television, this riveting, riveting video. Okay, um, yep. And I also managed to loosen one of the railings there to go back and super glue that. But this is sort of what happens as you go on. You're sort of one step forward and two steps back, fixing all the things that you've broken. Yep, that's modelling. <laughs> it's either that or on my hands and knees on the floor fighting with a bloody carpet monster, some part that I've dropped, yeah. All right, so then that one gets tied in there. Yep, that's it. And that's kind of what she looks like. Yep, it's not really much to talk about there. There were quite a few of them. I had gaps all along the railings that needed doing. But this sort of just added that extra level of um, realism. So there we go. How about that? 
Not too bad. And that white glue sets pretty quickly for me, especially under the lights. So I can trim away excess straight away and job is done. Next job is step 10, which is putting the ropes in for the anchor. And you know, some people put chain in, but really I had a look at all the, the photos and it didn't look like chain, it looked like rope. So I didn't like the thin stuff that was in the Revel kit they suggested. I wanted something a little more chunky and with a, with a decent texture on, so I used some of my rigging cordage that I have for my sailing ships. Now there's a little sort of pointy up blob here, which I found in the photos was a mount for putting a coil of rope. Revel wants you to put it right at the tip of the bow, but it's kind of silly. If you're sitting there, there's nothing to mount it on. Whereas there's a little tie point here. So, very easy to make a little slip knot there, tie it off. Then you've got to try and get the coils. Now, these can be troublesome. Trying to get the first few is the hardest. So sort of once you've got those first few down and they're sitting in that white glue, which don't worry about it being everywhere because it's easy enough to clean up with a uh, cotton bud with some water later. But if you persevere, eventually the coils start to sort of fall down and take shape and you can build the whole thing up. So here we go. It's starting to get there now. It's, um, it's a little bit fiddly, but if you've got a knack for it, I've done it a few times, so I know that you just keep pushing and eventually it all seems to come together. Dob of glue now. Hold all that in place, cotton bud. There you go. Here's a nice coil. That's not going to move. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, pretty happy with that. As I say, all the splodges will disappear later. Next, you've got to tie that off. So it goes around and onto this bollard in the middle. Now, it would have been sort of easier if I didn't have that little pesky little 20 millimeter gun in the way. But um, unfortunately, I put that in. Chicken and egg stuff. If you're doing your kit, leave your guns off to absolutely right at the end. Uh, this thing goes around to a cleat, a little cleat there, and it goes through the cleat and then bends at right angles. Now it sort of fouls up with some of the gaffs here, uh, those sort of pokey, big pokey sticks with um, spikes on the end. And um, it's really not sort of very good deck management, but what the heck, this is what we've got to work with. That goes up to a point up on the top here, sort of near the bridge, and it sort of mounts into a little hole there, and that sort of must be sort of this anchor point. I don't know. I don't know if it goes actually into the hole. That was easy enough to trim, fit into place, hold, and there you go. That one is done. Yep, looks good. I decided to do the antenna wire next. And for this, I used Easy Line because really, looking at the photos, it's not very thick. Certainly a lot thinner than any of the ropes supplied in the kit. I thought it might have been the same colour as the hull, sort of the, the uh, Schnell boat weiss, you know, which is sort of a slightly greyish white. But no, they seem to be sort of dark cables. Maybe some of them were painted white, I don't know. Super glue is very easy for this. You just tie a simple knot or loop it round, double super glue, uh, sets in seconds, holds in place, and you can tension that stuff very easily. It mounts from the um, ring around the forward gun, and it goes all the way through to the midships here and goes around that little frame behind the twin 20 millimeter. That's pretty easy to do with the uh, super glue and easy line. Now there is a nice little flagpole here and that's where the kit would have you put this on but um, it's, a, it's a decal and it'll be nice and thin but it's not very accurate and it's pretty cartoonish. So I purchased these from uh, Duplicator right? and they are historically accurate flags for Craig's Marine. So I'll be using those. So if you don't like swastikas, I mean, just turn away now or blur your vision. This is historically accurate. This is what I'm going to put on it, okay? I understand that Revel cannot supply them with swastikas on because they are illegal in their country. That's fair enough. But I'm not in there. I'm an Australian. So I'm going to put these on. All right, these just cut out and then you kind of glue them together and, uh, and then we'll hoist it. How hard could it be?
finish is all done now. The flag just kind of finishes it off. And I'm glad I've got the aftermarket one. It's got the correct symbols on. That's what I want for my Schnorr boat. It might not be what everybody wants. And, you know, I know there are legal requirements in some countries not to have swastikas. But I don't have that restriction here in Australia. So that's how mine's going to look. And it's historically accurate. Okay. So, my Schnell boat, my camo scheme, red stripes, all these things. It's, um, it's possible. There are photos of the camo scheme and there are photos of the red stripes. And there are photos of a lot of the things, but no one photo that has everything. So, it's kind of a what if in some ways. But... It's very, very likely a Schnell boat, something like this, did exist. And if not, it should have. It's pretty. <laughs> a number of you have asked why there's sort of always a plea I saw um, sitting on, you know, sitting in this uh, corner of the screen, a little Nessie there. Well, the thing is, right, the Schnell boat sort of, by the time it takes up the, the corners, you know, the, all the way along and the, the base sticks out here, there's always a dead area in this part of the screen. There's nothing there. So um, I happen to have this little police you saw here that um, David Eves gave me so um, it just kind of fills that space and it uh, it's just a bit of a continuity type element there you go and a bit of comic relief and you know for those that are too serious and get all upset about it well <laughs> bugger I don't care now look if you've enjoyed my video and you like the sort of things I do on this channel well please like this video uh, comment but just something constructive or polite you know just be respectful with your comments <laughs> we don't appreciate abusive ones. There's no point. If you don't like my colour scheme, that's fine. Just keep it to yourself. All right. Uh, also, you can subscribe. Yeah. If you really like what I'm doing, subscribe. You can hit that thanks button now. That is terrific. If you really sort of think, Thee, wow, that's great, Harry. How can I help you out? You can hit the thanks button and send me a few shekels. It's uh, one way of making sure I can afford to do another video. That would be good. There's also Patreon and the YouTube members program. You can join those and subscribe. That really helps me out. Then I know I've got some regular cash coming in to pay for all the things I need for this channel. So there's lots you can do to support me if that's what you want. Otherwise, you could just watch me for free. <laughs> as long as you watch those ads in between all the breaks. Yeah, monetization is what I live on. So we need it. Okay, well, Schnell boat, I can't believe it. It's actually done. Yeah, it's taken a while and I've had a few delays, but I'm so pleased that it's finished. So we'll end this video by a little montage of uh, various photos so you can get a good look at all the details. And... There'll be more photos on my Facebook page and also I'll put a link to the website. So if you want to catch up on the old videos, there's a website for Harry Houdini models and I have a whole page for the Schnell boat and you can actually go to a particular video. Like if you want to know how did I do the photo etch on the guns or how did I make the rails or how did I do the camo or how did I do the red stripe. That's all listed there. All the videos are individually placed on the page telling you what's in each one. All right. Okay, well that's enough of it. I think we're done. I deserve a really big curry now. <laughs> okay, it's goodbye from Australia and it's hooroo from Harry Denny. <laughs>